Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi folks, this is Andrew from 1AAuto.com. I've got a 2004 WRX here. The driver's side brake caliper has seized up and it's not working correctly anymore. I've got a brand new one from 1AAuto.com. There's no core in this, doesn't need to be returned to us. I'm gonna show you how to install it. And at the same time, we're gonna take this opportunity and install some performance pads and rotors. Why does this car need a brake caliper? Well, this is the passenger side and it might be difficult to tell, but this wheel is bright silver and it is covered in a ton of brake dust. Additionally, when driving this vehicle down the road and the wheel is straight and during a panic stop or hard braking on the highway, the car wants to pull to the passenger side. So that tells us that this brake caliper is doing more work potentially than the other side. And that possibly this side is not seized and the other side is seized. Now, that could be opposite. This caliper could be seized, causing all this brake dust. However, when we're braking and it's pulling to the right, it's a pretty good chance that this caliper is working properly and it's just doing more work and that's why there's more dust. So we need to investigate the other side and see what's going on. Come over here to the driver's side and this wheel is again dirty with brake dust, but it's not as dirty as the other side. So I'm curious now, and I think that this caliper, and you can also look through the wheel here, it looks kind of rusty. It looks maybe older than the other caliper. Maybe the other caliper was replaced at a different time, and this is original or something, or it's just older. So I believe that that caliper is seized up. I'm gonna lift the vehicle in the air. We'll take the wheels off. We'll check it out some more and uh, show you how to replace these calipers. You should do them in pairs. It's best uh, practice to do them in pairs. That way you know both are up to snuff and, perform and performing properly. So you can buy those pairs of calipers from 1AAuto.com and we'll show you how to install them now. I'm gonna use the special lug nut tool. These wheels use an aftermarket lug nut. Normally this would be a 19 millimeter uh, lug nut but instead I'm gonna use the special tool for it and loosen the lug nuts while the vehicle is on the ground. Put a socket on the breaker bar here and just loosen them all. And then when it's, they're all loose, we can raise and support the vehicle. You can use a jack and jack stands. We're gonna use the two post lift to raise the vehicle. With the vehicle raised and supported, I'm gonna finish taking off the lug nuts. You can use the socket that fits them. I'm using the special socket that comes with these lug nuts. Once I take it off, I'll get to the last one. I'm gonna hold on to the wheel and make sure it doesn't fall off. And then I'll remove the wheel and tire. I can see that this brake caliper is pretty rusty. Uh, and you can check the how thick the pads are here, but if I try to move it, it doesn't wanna move at all. So it's a pretty good indication that this caliper has seized up and it does look original. If we go to the passenger side, this caliper has been replaced before. It's got some paint on it that has worn off. And if we grab onto it, it actually moves a lot easier. So it slides in and out. So this side was likely doing all the work and that's why when I stepped on the brakes really hard, it would pull to the right. Back to the driver's side. We're looking up at the hydraulic line fitting. It goes to the brake caliper. It's 12 millimeter. You can use a 12 millimeter wrench to loosen it, but not take it off all the way. I just wanna make sure that once the caliper is freed from the bracket, it will be easy to undo the bolt because it will be difficult to hold the caliper in my hand and try to free this bolt. This way it's held into the bracket and won't move while I'm doing this. So I'm just gonna loosen it. It's gonna leak some fluid and then I'm gonna tighten it back up just snug so it doesn't leak but I know that when I come back to change this caliper, I can just spin that bolt off. So I need to remove the slide pin bolts here. They're 14 millimeter. I'm gonna start with the bottom one, and there's a top one. So break that free, remove the bolts, break the top one free, and then remove both of them. Just spin them out by hand once they're loose. Now 
and I can pull the caliper off. See the pistons are pushed pretty far out, so these pads are kind of worn down. Slide pins do move freely, so it's likely that the pistons were seized up. Pull the pads out from the caliper bracket. Kind of wiggle the outside one out. You can use a pry bar if you need to. The inside one is stuck pretty well. So you're gonna use a small pry bar to remove the inside one. And just pry that off. It does have a strange wear pattern on it. So it was kind of wearing, kind of tilted, being pushed into the rotor. See that wear pattern at the top of the pad, so that was no good. I'm going to lift up and support the brake caliper with a bungee cord so it doesn't fall and uh, break the brake hose. I'm going to remove the two upper and lower caliper mounting bolts uh, to the knuckle. These are 17 millimeter. I'm use a long ratchet, 17 millimeter on the lower one, break it free. Don't want to remove them all the way though, because uh, if I take this one all the way out and I go to remove the other one, I'm probably going to drop the caliper bracket on myself. So I'll loosen that up. The top one, there's some clearance issues between the strut bolt. So I'm going to use a closed end wrench, 17 millimeter, break this bolt free. And once they're broken free, just kind of work them out with the wrench, spin them off. Once they're loose enough, spin them out by hand and remove the bracket. This one's stuck a little bit, so I'm gonna use the ratchet again. Gonna get them loose enough so I can do it with my hands. Hold on to the bracket so I don't drop it. These are just kind of rusty so they don't spin out super easy. And there we go. Take the bolt out. So now we're looking at the rotor. Now, this rotor is gonna come off really easily. It actually didn't rust to the hub at all. Somebody put some anti-seize on here the last time they did a brake job. If it was stuck, there was two threaded bolt holes that you can put an eight millimeter bolt into and it'll push the rotor away from the hub. But we got lucky and this one's gonna come right off. Install the new rotor backwards. Clean it with some brake parts cleaner. Wipe it down. This is a performance rotor, but a regular rotor will be the same exact procedure. Flip it over, do the same thing to the correct side. Now, the direction for these performance rotors, you can have the sweeps going towards the front the veins inside are not directional, so it doesn't really matter what way they go. If you like them going the other way, you can put them the other way. Uh, but these rotors can go on either side of the vehicle because the internal veins of the rotors are not directional. I'm gonna thread on a lug nut to hold the rotor in place so it doesn't fall off. And the caliper is the same exact design as the original. Comes with new copper crush gaskets underneath the little plug where the hydraulic line goes. I'm gonna leave the caliper bolted to the bracket so that uh, it's easier to remove the bolts from the bracket when the caliper held in place on the car. So I'm gonna line it up, install the mounting bolts, and then come back and remove the caliper from the bracket, hook it up to the hydraulic line, and reinstall it. Let's see that this caliper moves nice and freely.
Now you're going to remove the caliper mounting bolts using a 14 millimeter wrench, just like the originals. Take them off, pull the caliper up and out of the way. This caliper came with the clips installed, but if they weren't installed, I'll take one out here, you would just push them right back into place. It, it takes some force to push them in there, that way they don't fall out. Just get them lined up and they should clip into place. But you do that for both sides. Ours just happened to come with them installed. Spray some brake parts cleaner on the pads. Don't have to soak them, just a quick spray. Put a little bit of caliper grease on the ears. The pad with the wear indicator will go on the inside, push it into place. Do the same for the outside pad. Remove that plug from the new caliper and don't lose the copper crush washers that are underneath it because you want to reuse those on the hydraulic banjo fitting. Pull it out. Put those aside. The calipers are marked left and right. Make sure you have the correct one. You want that bleeder screw at the top. There's some flat spots on the slide pins. You're going to line those up to get the caliper in place. Sometimes it helps if you can kind of roll it in place. Reinstall the caliper side bolts, get it lined up. Thread them in by hand and come back and torque them afterwards. Now the banjo bolt that I loosened earlier, I'm going to re-loosen it and you're going to lose some brake fluid. But there are two, uh, there's a copper crush gasket that's on the top and the bottom and the hydraulic line will line up on the back of the caliper, there's some little mounting points that it lines up with. So I'm going to loosen that with a 12 millimeter wrench. Shouldn't be on there too tight because I already pre-loosened it when I could have a good grip on it. I'm going to remove the banjo bolt from it. some fluid. Just make sure you wipe that up. Put the old caliper aside. Pull the banjo bolt out. Make sure you pull the copper crush gasket off of it. There's one there. Kind of work your fingernails underneath it. Might need a razor blade, small flat bladed screwdriver. I was able to get this one with my fingers. Then we're going to install the new copper crush gaskets. One will go on the top, one will go on the, so that one comes off there. Copper crush gasket goes on this end against the head of the banjo bolt. And then you'll put the banjo bolt through the banjo bolt fitting and another copper crush gasket goes there. And that creates the seal for the banjo bolt and the caliper, thread it into the caliper by hand, get it started, and then snug it down. Don't over tighten it. Uh, just, just get it snug just a tiny bit so it doesn't leak. Torque the banjo bolt to 13 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. Once you 
to get it torqued, it'll click and then you're all set. You don't want to over torque it, you just want to torque it enough so that it crushes the copper crush gaskets and makes a seal. So now we're going to torque the upper and lower caliper slide pin bolts to 27 and a half foot pounds. I've got the torque wrench set to 27, that's close enough. It doesn't do halves on this torque wrench, so torque the top, uh, bottom one. And then to torque the upper caliper slide pin bolt, use a short extension. It'll just make it a little bit easier. All right, so now we need to torque the caliper mounting bolts that mount it to the knuckle. So there's one on the top, sorry, one on the bottom, one on the top, you really can't see it, but it's 59 foot pounds. I'll get this in place here and once it clicks, you're all set. Those were pretty snug to begin with. I'm gonna use a short extension just to help me reach the top. And again, once it clicks, 59 foot pounds, you're all set. I'm gonna open up this bleeder, pull the cap off, I'll let some of the air out and the fluid out. I'm gonna kind of gravity bleed it right now. Uh, this will get you the majority of the way there. And then you can have an assistant help you with the rest. So I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench and just open this up. Don't take it all the way off. And that's pretty loose. So fluid is gonna start to run down through the hose from the reservoir and it will fill up inside the caliper here and push the air out. And we'll start to see this dribble out and it might take a little bit. There you go, it's starting to come out now. Come out pretty steady. So I'm gonna let it close up. assistant come help me. At this point, the opposite side will be the same exact procedure. All right, with an assistant in the car, we're gonna bleed the brakes. If you've done both front calipers, you would start at the passenger side. Now we are working on the driver's side because that's the one we replaced. Uh, you should do them in pairs, but if you do, you would start with the passenger side. That's the procedure because it's the furthest from the reservoir. Now I have already gravity bled these brakes. So most of the air should be out of them. So I'm gonna have the person in the car, can you pump it up please? All right, and hold it. And I'm gonna open the bleeder screw. This is a 10 millimeter wrench. It's probably gonna squirt out. All right, and I'm gonna close it up. I'm also gonna keep an eye on the reservoir, make sure it doesn't go too low. Pump it up, please. Feel nice and hard? Yeah. All right, hold it. I'm gonna do it one more time. There's not a lot of bubbles coming out because like I said, I gravity blade it first, which really helps. Do it one more time. That looks really good. No bubbles coming out. Close it up. Pump it up. Once that's done, we can reinstall the wheel. I'm gonna take off this lug nut I was using to hold the rotor in place. Put it aside for a second, grab our wheel and tire, put it up into place. Reinstall the lug nuts, start them all by hand. I'm gonna use my lug nut tool or you can use the socket they used and just tighten these up by hand. And then we'll torque them with the vehicle on the ground. I'm gonna to torque the lug nuts in a cross pattern. Factory torque spec, 65 foot-pounds for the wheels. I'm using 
a special lug nut tool, otherwise you use your regular socket. And do this for any wheels you took off. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.